Welcome back to the Engaging People podcast. Today we're doing another segment of our employee engagement goes to the movies, where we consult the silver screen for powerful lessons of what to do and what not to do to create the right employee experience. Today we're talking about one of my favorites, Remember the Titans, which came out in 2000, starring Denzel Washington and Will Patton. Plot summary adapted from IMDb. In Virginia, high school football is a way of life, and in 1971, high school football was everything to the people of Alexandria. But when the local school board was forced to integrate an all-black school with an all-white school, forming T.C. Williams High School, the very foundation of football's great tradition was put to the test. The head coach of the Titans, Bill Yost, played by Will Patton, is replaced by an African-American coach, Herman Boone, played by Denzel Washington from North Carolina. Tensions arise when players of different races are forced together on the same football team. Based on a true story, Remember the Titans takes a look at the beginning of integration in Alexandria, both the racism and the friendships that result from overcoming prejudice. So as we watched the film, we identified some of the most important principles that lead to strong unified teams. And if you want to help your team win, we actually put together a handout for you called Winning with the Employee Experience. And you can find that and download the full handout at decisionwise.com slash titans. So let's roll this first clip that talks about unity and diversity. You listen. You take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together right now on this hollow ground, we too will be destroyed. Just like they were. I don't care if you like each other or not, but you will respect each other. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you will learn to play this game like men. Kenna, what are your thoughts on that clip? Yeah, so, you know, just a little context. So before this clip, they were fighting nonstop at their football camp, and there was a lot of segregation still, even though they had tried to be integrated. It was the white players against the black players and just nonstop fighting, and nothing the coaches were doing was working. And so they take an early run to Gettysburg, and uh, like at 3 a.m. in the morning, and this is uh, that powerful speech. So right after this powerful speech, which I just think is one of the most powerful parts of the movie, Right after this moment at the scrimmages, you see Bertier and Campbell come together in, in that famous bonding moment as they decide in basically one moment to forget their differences and prejudices and come together with that famous left side, strong side. And you can kind of see the hesitation, like, do I want to overcome my prejudice right now or do I want to remain how I've been feeling? And, and what a powerful what a powerful thing it was when they chose to put aside their differences and unite to form that stronger team. And, and really, Adam, I think they were way stronger together. And I think this can really be applied to any aspect of life and business. You know, diversity brings strength and power and setting aside our differences to unite for the greater good of a team or an organization or a common cause can bring unparalleled results. Um, why don't we roll the second clip that talks about strong leadership? Yeah. Just to give a little context before we, we before we play the film, this is at the state championship game at the end of the film, and this is the classic locker room scene, halftime, tough game. Uh, that's what we're going to be watching here. Awesome. Let's roll it. You boys are doing all that you can do. Anybody can see that. Win or lose. We're going to walk out of the stadium tonight with our heads held high. Do your best. That's all anybody can ask for. No, it ain't, Coach. In all due respect, uh, you demanded more of us. You demanded perfection. Now, I ain't saying that I'm perfect because I'm not. And I ain't going to never be. None of us are. But we have won every single game we have played till now. So this team is perfect. We stepped out on that field that way tonight. And uh, if it's all the same to you, Coach Boone, that's how we want to leave it. Yeah. I hope you boys have learned as much from me this year as I've learned from you. You've taught this city how to trust the soul of a man rather than the look of him. 
And I guess it's about time I joined the club. Herman, I sure could use your help. Awesome. Adam, what are your thoughts about that clip? Yeah, there, there's so many great examples of leadership in the film. I, you, you see the two different coaches. So there's Coach Boone coming from a different school, and then you get Coach Yost. They really come together, as well as you have Julius and Gary, who were the team captains for those different schools under those coaches. So, you know, these individuals all coming together, but really it was Coach Boone that was the central leadership figure. And they, they show this throughout the film. Everyone has their moments, but really Coach Boone is what sets the foundation and really a lot of the lessons that we can draw on from the leadership lessons are from him. And so I've identified four leadership principles that, that we developed from Coach Boone. And, and the very first one is is he created a, a high standard from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. He, he came out in the very beginning and says, I demand perfection from, from my players. And I think that that's where this clip really plays in is Julius. This is almost a moment at the end of the film where Coach Boone almost let his guard down a little bit. Mm-hmm. In the film, he says, you know, um, if as long as we have our he- our heads held high. Yeah. Um, you did a good job. You, you did, tried. You did a good yeah. job. You tried. And this is really where Julius steps up and says, no, look, we came in perfect with a perfect record. We're going to leave with a perfect record. Mm-hmm. And I think what this shows is that leadership, when it's at the top and it's done right, it has a trickle-down effect. Mm-hmm. And it affects the leaders underneath underneath the the main leader there so absolutely again i think that this is a place of um where julius is is his time to shine in a pivotal moment the second leadership principle is is setting clear expectations The, the boys really understood what they needed to do to win and i think that with organizations it's it's critical to know when our people are winning you know the day to day aspects of of the role itself and knowing when we're doing well. The third one I, I feel like you addressed really well in that first clip, but but Coach Boone really motivated and unified the team from a leadership standpoint. He knew the times where he needed to inspire and really push push the boys and the players there. Mm-hmm. And the last one is he believed in the team and he trusted the process. And and by trusting the process here, it's it's the fact that he implemented hard work mental work at the very beginning and it almost feels and and can I you know what I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on this but it almost feels like he broke the boys down and then built them back up absolutely and I think that what he built them back up in was he uh, increased discipline Mm -hmm. uh, their overall character was stronger in the end and and then just their mindset was 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 ready for for the game and also to help the community and so I, I think it's important for us to remember, just to give a little recap here, is that leadership funnels down, starts at the top. In this example here, it started with Boone, moved to Yoast, moved mm-hmm. to the captains, moved to the team, and then in the very end, really affected the community in a positive way. 100%. I think, I think the leadership, Boone and, and Yoast and everything, trickled down to the players, but then the players trickled down to the community, like you said, just powerful, powerful impact. Love it. Great. Let's play our next clip. Awesome. What about you? You gonna go to college? Oh, not me, coach. I ain't a brainiac like Rev. Think you got a future in football? Oh, heck no. I just figure if I gotta be in school, I might as well hit some people while I'm at it. All right, I like that. <laughs> a self-aware man, I like that. Well, if you don't go to college, it's not gonna be because you're not qualified. So I want you to bring me your test scores at the end of every week. We'll go over them together, okay? okay. We'll keep that between you and me. Sure. Kenna, what are your thoughts on on potential in, in this particular clip? Oh my gosh, I love, this is, I said, you know, I think I'm going to say this every time. This is my favorite clip. This is one of my favorite clips. This is just honestly one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I love it. Um, this clip is is about seeing the potential in others. And, and you know, you have Larry Lastic and you have Coach Boone. And, and this is still at the part of the camp where everybody is pretty segregated and pretty, you know, still kind of fighting. And, and Larry Lastic just got it early on. He didn't really care about race. And, and, and it was cool that, um, Boone saw the potential in him. And, and I just was thinking this whole time, you know, here's, here's a, here's a kid who didn't really do well in school. He thought it didn't come from a family that really went to college. Um, he didn't plan on going to college and he really couldn't see his potential. I think sometimes people can't see their own potential and their own capabilities. And I just think this exemplifies the power of a great people-focused leader um, because Boone believed in Lastic. He truly saw his potential and he helped him see it little by little. Like it didn't come all at once. Right when Boone said, you know, 
if you don't go to college, it's not going to be because you're not qualified. So come bring me your test scores and we'll go over them. It's not like all of a sudden Larry Lassick was like, yeah, I'm going to go to college. You know, it happened little by little. Um, but little by little, he was able to see what he was capable of because of Boone, who who saw that full potential. And I think that it's amazing that Boone took the time to help him reach his potential. That's not something that you're contracted to do as a football coach, you know. It's just incredible that he wanted to take the time to help him reach that. Um, I, I just think if people can't see their potential, they probably won't reach it. He wasn't going to go to college, and, and then with Boone's help, he ends up passing, and he ends up getting into college. Um, and so I just had a few questions for you listeners as you're listening to this, you know, thinking about what are your employees capable of or your team members or your direct reports, and how can you help your team members and coworkers and, and direct reports see and reach their potential? And I think there's power behind helping people do that. That's great. I love the ending scene where where Larry goes and hugs Coach Boone at the very yeah. end when he says, I passed, I made it, I'm, I'm going, going to college. I'm going to college, and yeah. He's, he's, you know, tearing up. It's, it's such a great scene. Yeah, it's beautiful. Great. So just to give a little context before we play the next clip, this is in the middle of the movie. This is right after the football camp, and all of the players are kind of, it's a night on the town. Yep. Awesome. Let's roll the clip. Heading over to the hill, Gary. Everyone's gonna be there. Why don't you hang out down here with us? We're... What are you trying to do, Gary? Listen to it. When something unexpected comes, you just gotta pick it up and run with it. I'm not running in the same direction as you are, Gary. Come with us. Look, standing up for what you believe in, it's all well and good, but you got your priorities real mixed up this time. Are you coming or not, man? So, Adam, what are your thoughts about standing for your values in the face of adversity? Yeah, the way that I break up the the film, I, I would say that there's three blocks. There's the first block, which is pre-football camp there's mm-hmm. and that's most of the team is divided it's it's um the community is divided the second block is the camp itself the football camp itself and this is where they become unified in, in a previous clip that we watched and then really there's this third block and this is post football camp and this is where their values are put to the test mm-hmm. and this is really where they uh, need to show what they're made of yeah. on and off of the football field and <clears throat> jerry in this particular moment is uh, really standing for correct values in the face of difficulty. And so just to give a little context here, I mean, this is his girlfriend in the car, in the car mm-hmm. uh, a lot of his best friends. I'm sure he's known these people his whole life. And they're saying, hey, come on, get in the car. Let's go play. We don't we, we don't want to hang out with with uh, your teammates, you know, the, the black members of the team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lesser man might have just jumped in the car or maybe went back and said, hey, look, I'm going to go with my friends. I'll catch you guys later. Mm-hmm. But he saw that this was bigger than that. This, this was a moment for him to to take a stand and to really stand for something. And the quote that I really like at the end of the movie, this is uh, Coach Yost. He says, trust the soul of a man rather than the look. Mm. And I feel like Jerry was standing for that quote in that moment. Yeah. And I, I think it's a great example. It is a great example for us all to follow our moral compass and be brave and have courage, especially in these difficult moments. Absolutely. I think it's interesting that, you know, um, Gary's girlfriend in that scene was like, you have your priorities real mixed up. And, and then he you know, silently taught her. No, (laughs) I don't. This is, this is what a fantastic teaching opportunity. And and she gets it later on. Um, I also think Yost is such an incredible example of standing for your values in the face of adversity as well. I mean, how much he gave up, you know, quote unquote, gave up. He gave up the hall of fame. He gave up all of these things in the moment um, to stand for what's right. He wasn't going to have them cheat just so that he could be head coach again. and, And I just think that's incredible. Gary and and Yos, really good examples of that. So it's time to give our engagement score to this movie now. Um, The criteria behind the score is how well it embodies good employee engagement principles. So our scale is simple from one to 10, one being least favorable and 10 being most favorable. Mm -hmm. So I would give this particular film a solid nine. Yeah. Yeah. Strong nine. And I think that the main reason is here at DecisionWise, we talk a lot about 
employee engagement, leadership development. Mm -hmm. Some of the main aspects we look at is is meaning, um, autonomy, growth, impact, and connection. These are some of the main elements, the key drivers of engagement. And you can find all of these and more in this film, as well as strong leadership examples, standing for something bigger than themselves. So that, that's a little bit of, of um, my take on it. Kenna, what's your final score and thoughts on the film? 100%. I'm going to go with a 9.5. Oh, nice. I, I just, I 100% agree with you. Those magic elements are all in there, in, like in the entire film, almost with every character. Um, that high leadership, not only with the coaches, but with the players and then eventually with the community, like you said, that trickle down effect, the moral compass. And, and I just think like all of these principles, helping people reach their potential are, are just fantastic employee engagement principles. If we could have a work environment that resembled the lessons and principles shown by the Titans, man, I think that we'd be, we really would be winning like that handout says that we prepared. So yep. 9.5. I, I love it. Great. Thanks, Kenna. Thanks for listening to this segment of the Employee Engagement Goes to the Movies on the Engaging People podcast. And just a plug again to download the Winning with the Employee Experience handout we prepared for you at decisionwise.com slash titans. And if you really want to take your employee engagement to the next level, we invite you to talk to one of our consultants here at DecisionWise. We'll catch you next time.